Welcome back artists. I hope you're doing well. In today's episode we're going to talk about color. We're going to also create some color wheels and I'm going to give you some pointers and some tips on ways that you can effectively use color to enhance your own creative artwork. When I was young I remember an episode of Captain Kangaroo where they did a segment on color and primary colors and mixing and for some reason, Captain Kangaroo's words stuck in my head um, where he said, out of the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, you can create the rainbow. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create some rainbows. And then you can take what I show you today and apply it to your own artwork and, and see how it enhances what you create. If you're going to follow along with me today, I'm going to be working with acrylic paints. You can work with watercolors if you choose or if you don't have the acrylic paints. But I'm going to show you a way that you can create a whole bunch of colors out of just these three. So what you're going to need today is some paper. I have some um, waterproof paper here for my acrylics so that the water doesn't soak through the paper but if you don't have special paper you can always use photocopy paper perfectly acceptable it might get a little saturated but this is just for fun so no biggie you're also going to need a pencil um, an old cd or something round it doesn't have to be a cd we're going to use it to uh, trace a circle you're also going to need a ruler and then, as I said, if you have watercolors, that's great. If not, um, like I said, I'm going to be using acrylics. So I'm going to need a paintbrush, a jar of water, and something to mix the uh, paints on. I use old styrofoam plates because they're inexpensive. So I say let's get started and have some colorful fun. So in order to do that, we're going to have to cut to another video. Ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, time to have some fun. First thing I'm gonna do is put on my trusty glasses. And then I'm gonna pull out my little uh, GoPro camera as you use on all these others. Thanks again to Melanie and Peter for the tripod. Yes, I'm going to thank them in every video I make. So we're gonna set the uh, GoPro over here. Last time I had a little trouble getting good framing so I hope I, <laughs> I hope I get it right this time okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a circle on our paper so this is where the old CD works if you don't have an old CD maybe you have a Tupperware lid or anything around that you can trace we're gonna put that right in the center of the paper and we're gonna trace it oh squeaky and then because it's a CD, we have a hole in the middle, so we can kind of put a dot there for our center. If you have a piece of Tupperware, you're going to have to guess. This is not a, um, not meant to be perfect, so don't worry about if you're off on the lines. The next thing you're going to need is your ruler. And what we're going to do is put a line across the center. that. And then we're going to put our pencil on the dot and we're going to, what we're doing is we're creating six quadrants in the circle. So put the first one like an X if you can imagine. We're going to do one this way and one this way. So put the pencil on the dot there and create a line that way and then go the opposite direction. 
Again, putting the pencil on the dot, creating a line this way. Not quite evenly spaced, but again, that's okay. This is not meant to be perfect. So we're going to start off with our primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. And we're going to put them on the wheel with a space in between each one. So we're going to do blue here, red here, and yellow here. These are known as the primary colors. These are the three colors that you use to mix to get all the other colors. The next level of colors you can mix from the primary colors are called secondary colors. By mixing, let's say, red and yellow, you get orange. Yellow and blue, you get green. Blue and red, you get violet. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the paint. When you're using paint, as I said, I'm using acrylic paints. If you use watercolor, that's a little less, um, you're a little less likely to waste any paint. So in the case of the acrylic paint, you just need a little dab. In fact, that's even more than I'm going to need. So now we need our water jug. And although I don't have a paper towel, I do have this handy. You want to have some sort of rag or paper towel handy just in case you need to mop up some water, such as what I just did there. <laughs> Okay, so first we're going to dip the brush in the water and we're putting it on the paint. And the whole idea is this is to get a little less than creamy consistency. You can use the paint right out of the tube. However, if you want to make it um, last longer, stretch further, and apply better, adding just a little bit of water to it will give you a as you can see, the, this consistency of kind of cream. Okay, so the, we're going to fill this space in here with the red. And again, this is not um, meant to be perfect. And for sake of time, I may speed up this video just so it doesn't take quite so long to do all this. So there you have your red. Which is just looking a little opaque, so it's looking a little more pink, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so now you have your red there. I'm going to clean your brush. If I was handy to a sink, I would clean it in the sink, but this will work. Okay. Now we're going to get a little bit of blue. Again, just a dab. As you can see, I used a little too much red there. I don't need it. But we'll use those when we go to mix some of these other colors in a minute. Same thing, using a little water in your brush. Mixing the uh, water into the paint so that you get that creamy consistency again. Doesn't take much, but you want to really work it into the brush a little bit, especially if you're working on a larger project. With this little project, we don't have to worry too much. Now we're going to fill in the blue pie piece. And don't worry if you're over the lines. It's not going to hurt anything. This, again, is just for fun. So now we have our blue. Clean our brush so we can get ready for yellow. Same thing again, we're going to get our yellow, another little dab of paint, 
It's really going to get fun in a minute when we start mixing these colors to uh, create those tertiary colors. A little bit of water again. Whoa, got a little too much blue in there. <laughs> if you accidentally have the blue when you start to mix the yellow, you can see you're going to end up with some green, which is what we're going to do in a minute, but we don't want that yet. A little bit of, there we go. Still a little got a green tint to it, but that's okay. We'll be able to hide it. There we go. Just keep mixing it till you get enough of the yellow. Okay, now we're going to fill in our, our yellow Eye shape. Okay, now we have our primary colors red, yellow, and blue. Next step is we're going to start mixing some colors. Since I have a lot of yellow on the uh, brush, still. <laughs> Normally I'd get up and go to the sink and clean the brush thoroughly, but <clears throat> that doesn't work real well for videos. So since I already have a little yellow in here, let's go ahead and mix the orange. So we're going to take yellow and red and put our yellow there. Get some red, and by working these two colors in together, should give us a fairly decent orange color. There we go, now we have orange. Okay, normally when you have acrylics. It's not so much a problem with watercolor if you're using watercolor paper because the water will soak into the paper. But this would normally, you'd want to set this aside, let it dry before applying the adjoining colors. For sake of time, I'm not going to do that. So let's just go ahead and apply our orange. Bless you, Harley. Okay. These colors are looking a little muted on this paper, but you're getting the point. Clean our brush again. And the next color we're going to mix is going to be, let's go to the green. So we're going to mix the yellow and the blue. So we have our yellow and our yellow and our blue here. So we're going to take some of the blue and some of the yellow. I need a lot of yellow. It doesn't take a lot to, uh, when you're mixing this, you want to, I'm going to do it about even, so about as much yellow, I'm going to add a little bit more there, about as much yellow as you do blue, but in this case with this um, ultramarine blue, you probably could use less. So now we have a the green there, and we apply it to our green pie shape. As a kid with my crayons, my red, yellow, and blue were always my go-to colors, my favorites to use. No different now that I'm using paints. 
Okay, so now we have our green. Then the last color we're going to mix is the violet. Brush off well. So we have some residual colors in our brush. Okay, the next color we're going to mix, as I said, is the violet, which is by mixing the red and the blue. We got enough water in here, so I think we can go without that. So we put a little red, a little bit of blue, got kind of heavy on the blue. Real heavy on the blue. Let's add a little more red to that. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to add the violet to the color wheel. Alright, so there you have it, your own color wheel. So we have the primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, and our secondary colors of orange, green, and violet. Next we're going to do a, another color wheel with the same setup with a few more colors. So in order to do that, let's go to another video. Okay, in the previous project wheel we used acrylic paints. This time I'm going to use something a little different that I really enjoy using which are watercolor pencils. These are great because they give you the ability to use them both as colored pencils or you can add water to it and turn it into a watercolor pigment. So for this one we're going to use the watercolor pencils. So you're going to need your round object again. And in this case, I'm going to put a line, we're going to create two color wheels. The first color wheel is going to be just like the first one that uses the primary and secondary colors. The second color wheel is going to incorporate the primary, secondary, and tertiary, or third level of colors. So the first thing we're going to do is put a light horizontal line across the paper. Since we're going to do two circles, this will allow us to keep them even and keep it looking somewhat designed. So by putting the CD on the, uh, on the line and trying to get that in the dead center, and then we outline our CD to get our circle. We're going to do the same thing over here. In the center with, with the, the dot, dot. Outlining, outlining our circle. Our circle. Don't worry about this being neat. This is just for fun. <laughs> okay, so the last one we divided this one into six pie shapes, pie pieces. This one we're going to divide into 12. So the first thing we want to do is create an X. which intersects with that dot that we put in the center. And the same thing going this direction. Don't worry if the pie pieces are not equal. This is just for fun. Okay, so now in the first color wheel, you have six colors to work with. We're going to do the same thing on this one. Putting our X in the middle. And then now we have the ability to create 
two color wheels with primary and secondary colors. This one we're going to want to go a little bit further because we want 12 pie shapes instead of six. So first thing we'll do is we'll put a horizontal, sorry, a vertical line. And then we'll divide this angle in half. And the same thing with this angle. And now we'll have 12 and 6 pieces. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is lay down some of the color pencil pigment. I'm, I'm using, using a, a, um, a, a waterproof, waterproof paper, paper. <clears throat> so that as I'm mixing my colors, they don't just soak right into the paper. They'll sit on top of the paper, which will allow me a little bit of time to get the mixed pigments into the color wheels. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a, a, little, a little square. square. And, and what, what we're doing, doing is we're laying, laying the, the pigment, pigment of, of the pencil, pencil onto, onto the paper, the paper thickly. thickly. And the whole idea is that, that we're going to add water to that and create a, a watercolor paint <laughs> to be able to put on the uh, color wheels. We do, do the, the same, same thing, thing with, with yellow. yellow. You can find these color watercolor pencils at any art supply store. Or you can Google it. I'm sure most of the art supply companies and stores have online, so you can look and see if it's something that you want to give a try, invest in. Okay, so now we have our, our three primary colors. We're going to take our brush. <clears throat> Before we take our brush, let's divide these up so we know what colors we're putting where. So with the first one, we had primary and secondary. So we're going to put blue, skip a space, yellow, skip a space, and red. Yellow and blue make orange. Yellow and, I'm sorry, yellow and blue make violet. Ooh, see, artists make mistakes too. That's not even right either. <laughs> Blue and yellow make green. Yeah, I'm an artist. <laughs> yellow and red make orange. Blue and red make violet. So we're going to go on this side, and what we're going to do is we're going to include the primary and secondary colors on this wheel but we're going to leave a space for the tertiary colors. So in between each one of these colors, we'll leave a space. So we're going to start with blue, leave a space, green, leave a space, yellow, leave a space, orange, leave a space, red, leave a space, and violet. Once we start putting, once we get these primary and secondary colors in, then we'll explain further what the extra space is for. So we're going to add a little color, a little water to our brush, and we add that to our little square of watercolor pencil pigment, and now we're going to apply it in our pie shape here. Don't worry about going over the lines. This is just for fun, so we're not caring too much about keeping it in the lines. We really just want to add the color to the wheel. And we'll jump over here and add the, a little bit to this one. Okay, so that's our red. 
clean our brush off here. And we're going to add the yellow. Get on our color wheel. yellow. Add the same over here on our larger color wheel here. And then we're going to go to the blue. I believe it's my favorite. Add that here. If you're using watercolor paper or um, paper that's intended to take color, watercolor, or water-based pigments, <clears throat> it won't soak into the paper. This is just a scrap piece of paper I had here in the studio, so it's really sucking the paint, the pigment. We jump over here to our larger tertiary color wheel, and we're going to add our blue. Whoop, went way over the line there. Okay, so now we have our primary colors into our wheels. Next, we're going to add our secondary colors. I'm going to do this. I'm going to lay down a little bit more pigment. Red. Some yellow. Some blue. Now we're going to do some mixing. <clears throat> so the first one we're going to mix is our orange. So we're going to take, since I already have the red up here, I'm going to mix them up here. I lay down this extra bit of pigment in case I need it for. So we're going to turn this one into the orange. And you just do it by adding red and yellow to each other. there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that on our color wheel here. Orange. That orange over here. sucking the color up. Okay. Next colors we're going to mix are going to be our blue and our yellow to get green. Do that. Should start seeing the green pop up there. There we go. And let's add it to this one first. Here's our green. There's our green on that one. And our green to our larger wheel here. Should begin to look a little bit more. And lastly, we'll add our violet. So we'll take the red, a little blue. That should be giving us our violet color. There we go. Add that to our first wheel. Violet 
over here. Okay, so now we have our primary and secondary colors on both wheels. The next step is on our tertiary wheel, we're going to mix <clears throat> the what's known as the hyphenated colors. Red, orange, orange, red, blue, green. Uh, you kind of get the idea. So in the case of the blue, <clears throat> in this case, in this color, we're going to do a blue and a green. So we have our green here. Make sure we have our good mix of green. And the whole idea at this point is you want to mix the blue and the green, which obviously gives you the hyphenated blue-green. Here we have the... And this should be really, really a, a color, color in between, between the, the two. two. Which looks, looks, since it's, it's watercolor, color, these, these are, are a little bit, bit more pastel-y. Pastel, pastel color, color, so... Color, so. <clears throat> They, uh, not quite as bold as the acrylic paints would be, but for sake of this video, this works a lot easier. Okay, the next one is we're going to mix the green and the yellow to come up with yellow-green. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is put down a little, a little bit, bit more pigment. pigment. So I'm put, put down, down yellow, yellow and some blue. blue. So we're going to mix the blue and the yellow together to get our green first. And then as the hyphenated color sound says, it's a yellow green. So it's got more yellow than the blue. So you see we're adding more of the yellow. And this should give us our yellow green color. In all honesty, that looks more green than yellow green, but that's okay. Okay, now we're going to mix the yellow and the orange. Put down a little bit of yellow here. We're going to use that same orange color we used before. Point it over here, but it's right here. So you can have some fun with mixing and just playing around with the colors and getting all different colors. So now we have a yellowish orange color, which is obviously the mixing of the yellow and the orange. It really just kind of gives you a deeper, darker color there. Next is the orange and the red. So we have some orange here. Let's lay down a little bit more red. And we're going to mix the... <clears throat> we'll take the orange and we're going to add some red. More red to it than orange. you see some blue pigment has migrated its way into my colors there. That's what I like about mixing colors. You should get all kinds of different things you hadn't thought about. So the next step is to mix the violet and the red. So we have a red violet or violet red, however you choose to hyphenate it. So we're going to Take our violet color here, and we're going to add red to it. That gives us our violet red color. And 
And last but not least, I'm going to take the violet and we're going to mix more blue into the, so it's a blue-violet or violet-blue color. You can see this one's not quite as violet as this color. And it's not quite as blue as that one. And there we have it. Two color wheels, a primary and secondary, primary, secondary, and tertiary. This can be an exercise both in color mixing, color contrasting, as well as uh, being able to lay out your overall design. Although I was not completely in the lines and neat, you can work with that. <clears throat> Seeing how neat and um, completely covered you can get the color wheel, the colors on the color wheel. So now what I'd like to do is cut to a video <clears throat> using color and a whole lot of mixing in a painting that I'm working on currently is called the Gnarly Old Mulberry Tree. And this painting is based on a mulberry tree that was outside the uh, back door of my childhood home. And I'll just let you watch it now.
Okay, now we've created three different color wheels. You may have only created two, that's fine, or maybe you didn't create one, create one at all. That's okay too, you can look at my wheels and get the idea. <clears throat> this is a tool that you can use, an exercise that you can use, to work on ways that you can use these colors in a contrasting way within your artwork. When you look at the color wheel itself, the colors that are directly across from each other are what's known as complementary colors. So the first set is red and green, which you can think Christmas. The second set is violet and yellow, which really have no connection to each other, <clears throat> but that's how they work. And then of course blue and orange. These colors, complementary colors, contrast as well as they create a visual vibration when you, uh, when you see them together. If you've been looking at this graphic as I've been talking, if you pause the video now and look at something white, you'll see something really cool. Most people can see it, not everybody, but most people can see the pastel version of these complementary colors. This is a way that you can create your own color wheel. Of course, you can also purchase color wheels most any art supply store or even online and these color wheels will give you the ability to work with different um, shades of different colors to see by mixing them what you're going to get in the case of complementary colors when you mix those <clears throat> you get different shades of brown so if you're just starting out with painting there's no reason to buy brown paint because you can mix your own I use a lot of brown so it, um, I already have those, but sometimes when I need a particular way to soften an image <clears throat> or work on something that didn't quite work out right in a painting, <clears throat> you can add a little bit of a complementary color to it and it can tone the color down and really in many cases it can actually fix something that you feel is not working for you as an artist. This is a book that I have had for many years. It's The Elements of Color. <clears throat> Again, I'm not promoting the book, but it is a good book. And um, to give you really the introductions of how to work with color, the benefits of how color wheels work, how complementary colors work, and, and also what combinations can work best when you are actually doing your own creations. So this is the Elements of Color. It's a good book to get. I'm sure you can find it through booksellers online. So I think that's it for today and I hope you've had fun creating the colorful rainbows and on the next episode we'll take the colors and maybe some of the ideas from the previous videos and combine them into one image that you can work on. So until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.